Imagine calling your mother on Mother's Day and getting no answer repeatedly. Suzanne Morphew, a 49-year-old woman, disappeared from her home in Maysville, Colorado on May 10th, 2020. Was Suzanne Morphew's disappearance a carefully orchestrated vanishing act, or did something sinister befall her? Where was Suzanne? Early in the morning of May 10th, 2020, Barry Morphew, a landscaping contractor, woke up at 4.30 a.m., prepared for work, and left his wife, Suzanne, asleep in bed. The previous night had been pleasant, with the couple enjoying steaks on the grill, intimate moments, and an early bedtime. Their daughters were away on a road trip, providing Suzanne and Barry time to bond. The weather was cold and clear, as Barry set off to a job outside Denver in his Ford F-350 truck. After reaching the job site, he checked into a Holiday Inn Express for a short rest before getting back to work in Broomfield, where his company was installing a retaining wall. Meanwhile, he received no response to his text to Suzanne or his daughters, prompting him to ask the neighbors to check on her. At around 5 p.m., the neighbor informed Barry that Suzanne was not home, but her Range Rover was in the garage, and her mountain bike and helmet were missing. Concerned, Barry asked them to contact the local police when he returned from Denver where he explained the situation to his co-workers before heading home. Look, this is the map of the area. Here is Suzanne's home, and here is where her bicycle was found. The Chaffee County Sheriff's Office initiated an extensive search for Suzanne, who was 49 years old, physically fit, and an avid mountain biker. She had been battling non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, but remained active and enjoyed riding her Santa Cruz mountain bike daily. During the search, a patrol unit discovered Suzanne's upended blue bicycle in a ravine, roughly a mile from their home. Deputy Damon Brown and Sergeant Lamaine Mullinax investigated the scene, finding the state of the bicycle puzzling. In the meantime, Suzanne's daughters and her boyfriend returned to the house, but she was not there. They explained the situation to the deputies, who learned about Suzanne's usual mountain biking routes and the fact that she rarely biked on the nearby road where her bicycle was found. Has she ever gone up? 225. Colorado Trail right there. Like, you know the big hill when she comes yeah. up the highway? Well, she hasn't, and I haven't checked there yet because that climb at the beginning is really hard. Yeah. And I think that it would be out of characteristic for her to do that, but I... A few minutes later down the road where the bicycle had been found, a deputy continues asking the boyfriend about Barry and Suzanne. The young man's father is now with them and advises him to speak freely. I know this is a weird question, yeah. but um, do Barry and Suzanne get along pretty well? Uh, you can answer honestly. You know, I think, I think they've had... As the sun went down, Barry arrived at the scene where the bicycle was found. He explains that Suzanne was asleep in bed when he left, and he didn't stay there afterward. The deputies searched the area and discussed the discrepancy between Barry's information and what they heard from the boyfriend earlier. They mentioned pinging Suzanne's phone, which led them to the location where they were searching. The last activity from her phone was near the time Barry said he left for work. This raised concerns, and they gathered some of Suzanne's clothing to provide a scent for tracking dogs. The case remained a missing persons investigation, but the possibility of something more serious couldn't be ignored. That night, search teams went out looking for Suzanne, but she couldn't be found. Her distinctive bicycle helmet with her name and phone number inside was discovered down a ravine, about eight tenths of a mile from where the bicycle was found. Despite desperate calls from friends and family, no trace of her was found. In the following days, Barry was repeatedly questioned by investigators from various agencies. A video was released offering a reward of $100,000 for information and search efforts continue. Anyone is out there that can hear this, that has you, please, We'll do whatever it takes to bring you back. We love you, we miss you, your girls need you. However, no signs of Suzanne being found. Suspicions or opinions grew, with some speculating about Barry's involvement in her disappearance. In September 2020, Suzanne's brother organized a search, but it yielded no results. As days turned into weeks and months, there was still no sign of Suzanne. Eventually, after an extensive investigation and gathering of evidence, Barry was arrested and charged with first-degree murder tampering with a deceased human body, tampering with physical evidence, possession of a dangerous weapon, and an attempt to influence a public servant. Despite the public's opinion and speculations, the investigators had been working diligently on the case. They executed numerous search warrants, interviewed hundreds of individuals, and followed up on numerous tips. The arrest warrant affidavit, totaling 131 pages, shed light on a complicated marriage with distrust, betrayal, affairs, financial issues, and finally, violence. The Sheriff's Department believed that Suzanne was no longer alive and had filed first-degree murder charges against Barry, 
The arrest marked the culmination of a comprehensive investigative effort that spanned a year. Media representatives later obtained the arrest warrant affidavit revealing the depth of the investigation and the evidence against Barry. Evidence obtained included chat transcripts, text messages, recordings, and photos revealing the troubled state of the Morphew marriage. Suzanne had confided in her friends about the problems she was facing with Barry, describing emotional abuse, control, jealousy, and arguments over money. Investigators also found texts on Barry's phone indicating their troubled relationship. While Suzanne's chat messages revealed Barry's jealousy, another set of messages from her records led investigators to discover that Barry's suspicions were likely warranted. Suzanne had been having an affair with a man named Jeff, and it had been going on for a couple of years. The man's identity was initially unknown, but with the help of a spy pen that Suzanne had been using to record conversations, they identified him as Jeff Libler. Jeff and Suzanne had a history dating back to high school when Barry and Suzanne were dating, and they had a previous encounter before Barry and Suzanne got married. After reconnecting on social media in 2018, their long-distance relationship resumed, with frequent calls and meetups in various locations. Jeff was married and had his own family. He claimed that Suzanne said she would leave her marriage once her daughters were in college, but there was no proof that she had told Barry about the affair. On the day before Suzanne was reported missing, there were 59 communications between her and Jeff. The last communication was a text sent to him via WhatsApp, suggesting that she was still alive at that time. However, her phone pinged at 4.10 a.m. and 4.15 a.m. the next morning, and then there was no further activity. Investigators found inconsistencies in Barry's account of the events surrounding Suzanne's disappearance. His phone and truck telematic showed unusual activity during the night, including a trip to Denver that seemed to have a discrepancy in mileage. As the investigation unfolded, it painted a picture of a complicated marriage with trust issues, betrayal, affairs, and financial disagreements. With the affair and other evidence, investigators believed that Suzanne was likely not alive, and they eventually charged Barry Morphew with first-degree murder, tampering with a deceased human body, tampering with physical evidence, possession of a dangerous weapon, and an attempt to influence a public servant. As the investigation into Suzanne's disappearance continued, several inconsistencies in Barry's story raised suspicions. One significant issue was his account of checking into a hotel, taking a shower, and then heading out to the job site. Surveillance footage showed that he had made several stops before arriving at the hotel and returning later with different clothes on. When investigators, along with Suzanne's brother, Morgan Gentile, and Jeff Bucket, gained access to the hotel room, they noticed an overwhelming smell of chlorine. Barry explained it as possibly coming from the hotel's cleaning regimen or pool, but hotel management later clarified their pool had been closed during the pandemic, and their cleaning products were peroxide-based, not chlorine-based. Moreover, inside the hotel room, they found a piece of mail addressed to Barry Puckett, which seemed suspicious, as if someone had placed it there to create an alibi. There was also a tranquilizer dart cover found in the dryer, along with freshly washed sheets. Barry admitted to using the tranquilizer gun to take down deer in the past for their antlers, which he would sell. Investigators considered the possibility that he may have used the tranquilizer gun on Suzanne, but there was no concrete evidence to prove this theory. However, Suzanne's spy band recordings revealed that Barry had been listening to true crime podcasts during a five-hour drive one of which involved a story similar to Suzanne's disappearance, with the bicycle left at a different location. The case against Barry Morphew took a significant hit. When the prosecution missed deadlines and failed to provide the defense with crucial information regarding DNA found in Suzanne's car, the DNA did not match Barry or Jeff Libler, Suzanne's affair partner, but it provided a partial match to an unknown man sought in connection with sexual assaults in Chicago and Phoenix. As a result of the prosecution's errors, the defense successfully petitioned the court to dismiss the charges against Barry Morphew. As a consequence of the dismissal, Barry was released from custody, and the murder charges against him were dropped. The investigation into Suzanne's disappearance is ongoing, and law enforcement officials have stated that they'll continue to pursue the case and potentially refile charges against Barry if new evidence emerges or if Suzanne's body is found. Various theories have been put forward about what might have happened to Suzanne including the possibility of foul play, abduction, or her leaving voluntarily. However, without concrete evidence or a body, it's challenging to establish what exactly transpired on that Mother's Day morning in 2020. Only time will tell if new evidence emerges, leading to a resolution in Suzanne Morphew's disappearance. Until then, the fate of Suzanne remains unknown and the investigation continues.